say that off the bat, he's running Masion. I, a plus. He's got Skunch in there, which is fun. Mix is a great Tem. And Tukai. I, yeah, I you're just, so I right. Like that. This is different. This is definitely different. I mean, a Tukai alone is already different than what most people are running. But you don't really want to see Tems like a Cerny Grumper and uh, Grumper and Golder uh, when you have a, a Tukai on your team. So I don't think we're going to be seeing Tukai too often. Uh, I mean, it is effective into Golder, but it both it goes both ways. So Buff Duck cleaning up the Kinu on Subaki Chan's side, which is really really good. Kinu does some incredible stuff onto Cerny and Golder and the Saku. So good stuff from Buff Duck. And hey, Subaki fearing the Volfi out of all the squad. Volfi is the most problematic, uh, and I guess I can see it against Nagais against Grumper. The overexertion part is the, is like the most annoying part to play against a Volfi, right? Just like you have to be wary if you're about to get plagued just for just to just to uh, just to be overexerted. It's so frustrating. The overexertion's rough, and and for me the cage is pretty rough too. I when it, whenever it's running handcuffs and it traps you in with those overexertions on the True. plagues, that's that's usually a death sentence for one of my Thames. So. So I, I understand banning Wolfie first. I've definitely done it quite a lot. Exactly. It's such a good opener too, because even if you plague something like a, you know, like a fire town, like a Riken, it leaves them trapped for that second turn. So you get a big, big does vortex that fall in turn. So yeah, it's so impactful sometimes. But hey, another tem that's pretty impactful, especially when you don't have the most. Actually, wait, I'm about. I was about to say you don't have the most mental tens, but you still got a Nagas to pick up. Which is exactly why Buff Duck picked up the Golder too. So he's pretty much testing or baiting uh, Subaki to pick up Nagas because you need Nagas for Skunch. But Golder should be slower than Nagas and get a good old Toxic Ink onto it. And Nagas, no matter what, no matter if you madness buff, two Toxic Inks, two to three Toxic Ink for sure brings it all the way down. So let's see. He did indeed pick the Nagas here. Yeah, I mean, Naga, it, it's it's important for Subaki's team, I think. Even losing the Yowler and uh, and the Kinu, and I think that bringing Naga through when you've got Thames like Saku and um, the, the Poop, I can't even remember his name right now. <laughs> Grumper. Yeah, Grumper. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like a little... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Naga is very important on this team. So I, I do think that that was a good pick from Subaki, even knowing that he's, you know, more than likely going to have to swap out this turn one. And then Mastion taking the second ban, some respect to the old guard fire Tem. Yeah, very true. And, you know, Subaki was one of the first to use Mastion to win tournaments as well, at least in our series. I know there's people before, but yeah, knowing what Mastion is capable of, but Mastion does not have access to Quetzalena, which is why we've seen it fall a bit short of people's uh, most popular picks uh, for Fire Thames, right? But still such a, probably still the heaviest hitting Fire Tem, I want to say. But you know, to the point we're trying to make for the opener, it's almost like who's going to flinch? Is Subaki retreating the Nagais? Or is Buff Duck retreating the Skunch? Are they both retreating? Are they both staying in? <laughs> the mind game start right away in turn one. It's going to be intense. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, personally, I, I feel like Buff Duck is safer to stay in. But uh, but at the same time, Skunch does die to a single beta mm -hmm. burst, and Naga won't die to a single toxic. Yeah, break. so maybe it's actually Subaki a bit safer to stay in because Buff Duck completely dies, as you said, and Subaki probably dies in two hits. But you don't want your Naga guys getting too too low, of course. But we'll see. I don't think the Skunch was to stay in, but uh, you know the Skunch retreats, and then the Nagas retreats. Then Buff Duck is kicking himself, wishing he kept the Skunch in to deal with the Grumper. But well, we will see. I mean, we're going to get our answers here. It's game number one of our semifinals of today's tournament. Uh, Buff Duck trying to... I, I think I could... Maybe I won't say upset, but Subaki has been on a tear doing so good in the previous tournaments. So let's see. Grumper Naga is going against Golder Skunch. As we said, who is going to flinch? Who is staying firm? Uh, the Temple Advantage is residing on it or leans on it. Yeah, I mean, just a just a slight war of attrition to start off. Got to see who 
will stare into the headlights of the oncoming car a little bit longer than the other. I, I think if both of them swap, that's still not a terrible position. I mean, letting Grumper survive without the perfect jab, it, you know, you can come back later on and, and still fight that off pretty well. There are some decent swaps here for both of them. I, I feel like depending on what this mix is holding on to for Buff Duck, kind of explains whether or not it's a good swap. If it's holding the Strange Vest, then absolutely no way should Mix be coming in here. Mm -hmm. But if he's not, if he still has that special defense, he might actually be a pretty solid swap. If he's squishy enough, he could take a mud shower and, you know, he'd be okay. Yeah, the only thing with Mix, these guys, uh, Naga's Fury, available that turn two. I believe Sandstorm or Rockfall. One, I know Grumper has access to one of those, and that is the AoE Earth Technique. So even if you bring it down to 40, maybe just Mix isn't so good into Subaki's team. I love Mix, so I love seeing people do good with Mix. But we'll see. Does that leave the Volarin? But Volarin into a Grumper. This is a tough swap for Buff Duck, but it looks like Subaki not trying to deal with the Golders. So let's see if, if Buff Duck stayed in or swapped. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Buff Duck stays in. Double edge onto the Saku. Thinking he might go first, but not in this world. Now the minus. Oh, the perfect jab. That was so good. Is now Saku dies if he wants to stay in again just from a toxic ink he doesn't even have to target it with the gun she gets a free yoshidashi yeah the mind games are so real i mean obviously everyone can say that it's so easy just beta burst the scunch right the scunch dies but subaki high level player you know respects his opponent says like there's no way there's no way scunch is staying in but look at that in the face of sudden death <laughs> <laughs> just stays in and hey gets big value saku one hit away from going down of course savage suplex brings it down another t ink brings it down and that's usually subaki's win condition so buff duck off to the races with that first turn and we said whoever didn't flinch and gets the upper hand in the opening turn gets a bit of the momentum and we're seeing it here saku on dev's door as we keep saying so either you swap, you try to survive, it's going to be tough. But we'll see. Well done. I respect Buff Duck for that bold, bold play. It doesn't work all the time. You know, if you go against a different player, they could just simply bait a burst in that spot. But it's about knowing your opponent's tendencies. And Subaki does always tend to do a uh, play like you're playing the, the smarter play per se. Not, you know, technically that was, a, keeping Skunch in was a smarter play, but you know, the, the, the right play. And you know, there's no right play, but you guys know what I mean, the straightforward play. I'm, I'm kind of curious here what Tsubaki was thinking would happen on turn one. As, as Saku does still take so much damage, but we may never know. I mean, definitely swapping in Goulder, expecting wow. Oshidashi was a good play, but the Savage Suplex on Saku was better. And now Goulder, Toxic Inking Goulder is going to be, you know, absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> strong liver instead of punching back so okay I, I was thinking punching back for the oshi but either way i think that's okay the death means that naga gets to come back in and pressure out skunch once more but now we're in kind of a similar situation to turn one where Tsubaki, do you have the nerve yeah exactly gold is still on the board but i don't think he's gonna uh i, I even think if, if it goes into a mix neutral damage if it goes into a volarin you do a bit there uh the question is i don't think you're safe to madness buff i know subaki wants a madness buff a madness buff would be so big in this game but it might be a one turn too slow i feel like you know if buff Duck reads a madness buff and stays in with skunch again uh, I mean, there's not too much Skunch could do besides another P-Jab, perhaps, onto Nagais to really make that Toxic Ink chunk. But we'll see. I mean, the Speed Arrow is on Tsubaki's side. He does have Bamboozle, so that means Tsubaki's Golder would go first. So the Bamboozle keeps it safe from a Toxic Ink. Alright, so Buff Duck does retreat the Skunch, not trying to get one shot here. Volarin does come out. So let's see. Yeah, and here's the famous duo. 
as we just see Bamboozle on Naga. Madness buff for free as the Toxic Ink doesn't do anything thanks to that speed arrow, but now the arrow has switched. Buff Duck has it. Your Bamboozle shenanigans won't work a second time, Zubaki. Yeah, but maybe the deed is done. Madness buff on Nakai's is huge. Uh, especially Yowler in the back line. Maybe able to one-shot it now with the with the Madness buff. Of course, Skunch would have been uh, one-shot regardless. And Mix with the Nagai's Fury probably goes really close to all the way down as well. The question is though, Tsubaki doesn't really have an answer to Golder. Because you know, Buff Duck has the physical pressure. He has Skunch, he has Yowler to deal with Tsubaki's Golder. But looking a bit ahead, how is Tsubaki take? I mean, maybe a good beta burst does a lot. I mean, it's neutral damage, so at plus two, I guess so. I guess so. Not guys could be the answer. But like you said, the speed arrow is on Buff Duck side. So let's see how this is an interesting turn. Yeah, I think the Grumper could potentially do some damage on the Goulder as well, but he has other needs at the moment. He's going to have to probably fight Mix and uh, Volarend, so so maybe not putting that much pressure on Grumper to perform at peak like that. Uh, Naga, Naga's at risk if he wants to stay in thanks to that speed arrow. That's That's the biggest issue for Tsubaki. The Toxic Ink does go first. It brings him from, oh. I think, 71, 72 down to 47. And Bamboozle comes last. It, it does at least protect against the Volarend. And here we get our answers. So Beta Burst, and wow, not even 50% despite being Madness buff. That is huge. That is a tanky, tanky Golder. I honestly thought it was going to do more without having any buffs. That's a good amount of special defense, I want to say, on that Golder. Yeah, and now Speed Arrow back on Tsubaki and Bamboozle still there. This might actually benefit Buff Duck a little bit. I mean, unless... Yeah, because Tsubaki's Goulder goes first on this board state. He won't be able to Bamboozle once more. Mm -hmm. It'll get popped and then he can't Bamboozle for his next turn. So if Buff Duck wants to just play this out and stick with it, he's, he's actually in a pretty good spot come turn six. Yeah, that was really good from Buff Duck. If he would have popped the Bamboozle, then it would have been similar to the previous play. Where Nagas felt somewhat safe. I mean, with Volrin here having a Noxious Bomb, I guess he's truly never safe. So most likely has to retreat. Well, the only times is Grumper and Cerny. I guess Grumper doesn't feel that bad though. Double damage into Volrin the, the, the following turn. But Metabolize taking the poison ticks off from Nagas. Oh, there it goes. That's a great play. You have a lullaby putting Buff Duck to sleep. Except for Gulder, who's holding on to the energy drink. That is that is actually a great play. I, I commend you, Buff Duck. Alright, so let's see. So, speed arrow. It wasn't a speed tie there. Uh, so same thing, Tsubaki has access or has the speeder on his side, so does not have to be scared of the Golder. The Golder on Buff Duck is running out of stamina, so doesn't fear too much. But yeah, Nakai's as well running out of stamina, so never mind. Nakai's not having a lot to do in this turn unless you want to overexert and go real, real low. Is it worth you did like 43%? Maybe. I don't personally think that it is, but it looks like he's staying in as Volaren swaps out for this mix. That is a move that I'd like to see if we can, uh, it, well, if we, if Buff Duck is able to get down to Deceit Aura, that would have been very nice, but Naga does take the rest, no damage done in the mix. And now it's potentially an easier target when it's not swapping into damage. Yeah, definitely. But now the speed arrow just flipped again. This is what happens when two Temtems have the same speed as each other. Tsubaki had it the last turn. Now Buff Duck has it this turn, which means Buff Duck's Toxic Ink should be able to go first. I haven't been keeping an eye though, Rosie. Uh, did you catch that? How much base damage does a T Ink do on not guys? Because I know with the Toxic Ticks, it brings it down. But can he survive one hit? 
Or does he even want to survive one hit? Hmm. I think that he does, even with the toxic tick, he'll he'll barely survive this. But he wouldn't survive a second turn of that tick. But I mean, he, we could always see something like the metabolize again, because I think that that was back online. But he decides to swap in the grumper instead, as it still is a little bit slow. But uh, wait, did he just bamboozle? Did we just did Buff Duck just bamboozle Grumper? Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a <laughs> he minute. He bamboozled Grumper and then popped it. Yeah. That was a bit perplexing. Maybe trying to... Yeah, I'm not too sure. We'll have to ask Buff Duck about that. Trying to... Um, maybe thought he clicked T-Inked again. Because obviously a little Toxic Ink would have done a, a good amount. But yeah, I think, a, I think a bit of a misclick. I know it's getting late out here. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try to give these guys their energies. Hopefully they can stay strong. Just one more, you know, a couple more games. We get into our finals and then we could all rest a bit. But yeah, Grumper coming out. So mud showers online. Uh, Rockfall also online. But you kind of want to save that too. It's on Puppet Master range. So we'll see. Grumper doesn't really take too much damage. I think Crystal Spike does a fair amount. But of course it's neutral damage since it's earth, synergy, uh, earth typing as well. Um, I wanted to step in for a moment. I don't think that Grumper has any AOE techniques. It has uh, it has Sand Splatter instead of Sand Storm and Earth Breaker instead of like Rockfall or anything like that. So I think Are that the sure? only AOE on Subaki's side is that Fury. Yeah, I know. I know Goldra has Pollution, which just adds a thing. But Grumper, I'm almost certain it has an Earth AOE. Let us know. I mean, Rose, you could be right. You could be right. I guess Thunder Electric Storm is technically AOE. But maybe maybe I am confusing it. I'll look back on the wiki to double check. But you, you're probably right, Rosie. But all right. Gold Derp going to get swapped out for the Cerneve. Cerneve already a good stone wall thanks to the Grumper there. So already hitting the board with some defenses. I mean, having this, this Cerneaf is actually looking decent right now. I mean, Scunch is out here, which means perfect jabs are always going to be a threat. Mix is Sweatband, which means that he is weak to any physical techniques. I don't know if, you know, potentially a water cutting Lily would be enough. 60% is kind of a lot to ask from neutral damage. Maybe doubling yeah, in, though, if, if Grumper is able to to attack it without knocking it into Puppet Master. That, that might be asking a little bit too much of a balancing act for Subaki right now, mm -hmm. though maybe maybe the Skunch spot is the better target. Yeah, I think it's actually the pressure is on Subaki's Grumper. There's no Deceit Aura on the board, so Grumper, the slowest Temtem, gonna, go, uh, gonna be going last. Mix could Crystal Spike, Skunch could Ashi Dashi, and Grumper is completely out of here. And it won't be able to get off an attack, so Subaki trying to find a Temtem, most likely to swap for this Grumper. Maybe the Golder, Big Boy Golder doesn't feel too bad. Honestly, I think it's his only bet. If not, I think Grumper goes down, but Mix keeping everything in. Did the read. Okay, so Grumper did stay in, but yeah, Ashi Dashi just devastating that Grumper there. Yeah, I mean, I guess just sacrificing Grumper despite a lot of potential down the line. Frond Whip on the Skunch, like, taking advantage of low priority when you're able to, does some decent starting damage. And now partnered with the Naga. Ooh, this is, this is actually scary for both of them, though, as Crystal Spikes would probably kill this Naga. Yeah, I mean it is. Oh wait, you're so right. I was I was thinking strange vest uh, could keep it, but it's the opposite. Special attack damage is gonna be doing massive on Naga. So you're so right. Uh, he could get the kill on Skunch. It's a hundred percent. It's trapped in. But you're gonna lose your Naga. If it was normal, if it didn't have a strange vest, it will most likely live. Plus two special defense would probably live a crystal spike. But the fact that it's Strange Vest putting all that special defense into defense, that's a different story. So we'll see. Is it worth killing the Skunch <clears throat> for the Nagais? 
I mean, Scunchin, yeah, the big temps uh, trying to get through Golder. Ooh, Psy Surge going before. So forget, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> forget the forget the Scunch going down. Beautiful stuff from Buff Duck. And hey, Mix. Mix is looking like a good temp -tem. Uh Definitely, I mean, doing so much work. I, it didn't look so good on paper, but dude, that side surge coming out to play. Beautiful stuff on Buff Duck's side. That's actually kind of amazing, as as I've heard some stories about Buff Duck having very speedy mixes recently, and now, now to see his one prio under speed, aka outspeeding a Naga, is is pretty incredible. A lot of diversity on Buff Duck's temps is, mm -hmm. is really what I'm learning here today. Yeah, I agree with you, Razi. I think the key is uh, some of these tamers. I have a feeling Buff Duck hasn't been playing too much rank, just maybe some internal scrims to get uh, warmed up and stuff. So some of these tamers like Subaki, like Matt Gia, they haven't played against a mix in a little bit. And not to say mix is like the holy, uh, the holy grail of, of, of temp temp, but I think it's like people forgetting uh, what it can do sometimes. And not maybe what it can do, but exactly uh some of the line of plays like maybe subaki didn't see that side surge coming its way in that play yeah and it's actually unbelievable what we're seeing right now mix is being ignored because subaki knows that he can't kill it so he's just gonna knock it into puppet master so why even do it right now so so somehow buff duck has gotten puppet master value out of a 60% HP mix. Yeah, and the sweat band is there. So Buff Duck already had the idea that mix is his win condition, or one of them rather, uh, and is doing work, is doing a lot of work. Subaki chan, uh, final two temp temps, Cerny, Golder, but Buff Duck, you would not have imagined that Skunch still in the green HP with that opening. Of course, it was that big hindsight play of not swapping out there. So yeah, Buff Duck with the early tempo, looking like he carried it all the way towards the end. Revitalize does connect onto the Cerny Vakors, but with those two heavy physical attackers in the back line, and then mixed with the heavy crystal spikes too to deal with the Cerny, uh, I think that would be all she wrote. Buff Duck looks pretty certain to win game number one in our semifinals, but we'll see. We'll see what goes down, but it's looking good. Voldoran for the Golder. Scunch and Yowler for the Golder and the Cernif. Uh, so yeah, it's looking it's looking pretty. And actually, Voldoran is aerobic too. So uh, hyperkinetic strike for the Cernif and the Golder. A lot of answers. Buff Duck has a lot of answers with the final Thames remaining. So it should be GG, but um, we'll see how it plays out, of course. Yeah, and I mean, that's a lot of answers when you've got five Thames remaining to just the two. That is often what you're going to see. I mean, sometimes someone will be hard countered, but in this situation, Buff Duck just has a great team to handle Subaki. As now, I mean, Golder just keeps on tanking and Colossity, it doesn't matter. Cerny rests to its grave. Stall no more, you poor, poor dear. <laughs> Golder versus the world now. It's it's almost poetic now that Buff Duck's final challenge That's of this so particular true. game is his own town. <laughs> that is so true. Very, very poetic. Uh, but there we go. Crystal Spike doing a good chunk of damage. So a couple more of those would uh, would do it. But Buff Duck trying to expedite things. Brings out the Volarin. A couple Feather Gatlings. I dare say just two Feather Gatlings with an additional Crystal Spike. That should be it for the big boy Golder, and well done. Very impressive stuff. As you mentioned, these tamers, these top players, they do have a lot of tricks up their sleeve, a lot of tools in the tool set. They, mm -hmm. If anybody could come back, it is Subaki. I mean, yeah. he is the master at reading what you've done and countering everything else that you could do. Mm -hmm. We've always said it here. Every time he looks like he's in a pinch, every single time he looks like he, he's in a rough position, he turns things around and look at that, insta-banning the mix. So no more sweat ban mix for this game number two. I do think that will be a difference maker, but not banning the mix means that the Volfi is available to pick up for the for Buff Duck side this game. We'll see how impactful the Volfi is, of course, but Buff Duck, uh, same ban, same ban for Buff Duck, so nothing different there. 
But yeah, already some different stuff from Subaki, so we'll see. It's game number two of our semifinals. Uh, Buff Duck one game up, Subaki Chan, we don't say it too often, one game down. He's looking to make a comeback, trying to go to a game three. As you said, Rosie, if there's any tamer that can do it, it will be the legend himself, Subaki Chan. So yeah, I'm excited. This is another epic showdown waiting for us to get through it. But now, are we gonna see the same turn one? <laughs> he's he's mousing over the scunch. Grumber <laughs> came through first, and I'm I almost kind of questioned that a little bit from Subaki. You know, of course he knows what he's doing, but Grumper didn't bring oh. the most value <laughs> last time. And Buff Duck, he says, if you want to do it again, I'll do it with you. You just got to click the fun buttons. But no, yeah. maybe Subaki considering Yowler instead. If Buff Duck decides to ban Naga, that could be a very big change headed into game two. One yeah, and I'd love to see Subaki it different. Wouldn't be prepared for. And yeah, already different. So didn't really like it, even though Naga could do a lot into the scrunch didn't really like it he did he you know even throughout the match of, of you know just playing with it didn't really enjoy so maybe thinking yowler could get more value in the end in the long run and i guess i can agree with them doesn't have anything that except the yowler that the nagas is absolutely necessary for well the nagas and the skunch but you could be able to deal with it with just strong physical pressure like this yowler so as you said already a different game to be played and I'm excited, Subaki with his Yowler, we saw him do some work, it was like a double show off and then Yowler didn't leave the board for the first 10, 10 or so turns. Uh, we'll see if it's something uh, of the like in, in this game. If we do find ourselves in a game 3, I want to see us with a very similar start, but I want to see Goulder take the ban on Subaki's side rather than Naga. And I would love to see how that changes things even more because giving Naga the freedom to do what he wants, but taking away his best friend's support, that, that could also be pretty big for Buff Duck. But more and more picks do oh, come through. Oh, and I missed it. How did I miss side. it? Two guy finds his way in. Exactly. <laughs> Two guy making his semi finals debut. Uh, and doesn't look all that bad. Goldrick can get a big tornado. Cerny doesn't like a lot of special attack. Uh, does decent against Yowler just for some good damage. Uh, Volarin was an aerobic Volarin, I believe. So, Tukai looking okay. We'll see. I'd love to see a Tukai do work. But this is it. Game number two of the semifinals. Skunch and Golder going against Grumper and not not guys instead. It's a Yala this turn So let's see if it's a different result. Definitely a different opening. I Love how buff duck ended his team because even Subaki might not have expected Mastion and Tukai mm -hmm. Yeah, it throws that you is... off uh, to the point we made last game uh Maybe maybe some of these tamers not playing against things like Masion and Tukai all that much. Uh, so, you know, not to say they know the moves. They know, you know, Tsunami, Tornado, Sharp Brain, stuff like that. But sometimes it just throws you off like, okay, is he swapping in here? It's just, it's just you know, you feel not as comfortable going against, you know, let's say a Quetzaleno opener or something like that that you've played a hundred times. So yeah, Buff Duck may be throwing Subaki a bit off, but I think he's still calm and collected. He should be able to play his best. Yeah, I mean, there are even some things that are just minor uh, inconveniences, potentially playing against something like a Mastion right now, where, you know, I haven't played Mastion since Kisua released. I don't know how high Mastion's attack, st attack stat goes anymore. I don't know what the numbers are. It, it could be 160s, it could be high 170s, and I, I really wouldn't know the difference. So I'd have to make that choice to take a look before I just risk some of my Thames lives on what could potentially be the most damaging flaming meatball of them all. And there we go, P-Jab getting things started. And Subaki getting things rolling too with the show off. And then double edge onto Yowler. That synergy not doing any damage. Toxic Ink on the Grumper. Nice Toxic Tick damage. Not too much Tink damage. 
Yeah, not too bad for... Oh, wait, no. He split damage there. So, yeah, as you said, T-Ink onto the Grumper and then a simple P-Jab onto the Yowler. But that was pretty much mitigated thanks to that double edge. And we saw that play previously for Tsubaki. He starts with the show off and the double edge to support it. So nice job. I'm wondering if you go for another show off. You're not too in danger. You have Chamomile, so Toxic Ink doesn't do very much. However, Savage Suplex is now online. That's big, big neutral damage. But of course, we saw it the er, we saw it the previous game. Oshi Dashi pretty much violated the Grumpers, so Grumper not feeling all that safe on Subaki's side as well. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of back and forth. I, I don't think that in any world Skunch goes down this turn for Buff Duck, but definitely a lot of damage could be done by this plus one Yowler. Uh, Skunch is definitely a little bit more fragile than the big old bear. So uh, if, if it were Oshi v Oshi, even with the stab that Skunch has, I think Yowler would come out winning that fight. Yeah, I mean, Yaller does have that additional 50% attack going for him. So we'll see. I would look. I mean, Skunch is obviously faster than Yaller, so that would be big. If Skunch has to tread lightly. If you go into Yaller and then Yaller goes into Skunch, that's a big 50% comeback of value going right into you. So let's see. Tsubaki, knowing what happened last game, not trying to make the same result go down. So Grumper swapping out for the Cerneef. And Buff Duck bringing Tukai in for Goulder, so potentially a misread there, not expecting that Cerneef. Oshidashi, though, on Cerneef does just shy of 40%. I mean, now uh, Tukai's gonna have to swap out again, but we're waiting to see what wow. Yaller is able to do. Savage Suplex does so much damage, even without the comebacker. Yeah, with the comebacker, he would have killed, actually. <laughs> I think it does. I think the map checks out. Uh, pretty much would have killed there, but yeah, good stuff. Subaki swapping in Cerneef, but Buff Duck maybe anticipating a Golder there. I think that's what Buff Duck was trying to read. He was trying to read a Golder swap in, so you have that tornado for the second turn. Two guys still has a tornado for Cerneef, but man, Water Can Lily hits way, way more than a Toxic Ink would hit on the two guys, so that's pretty deadly. So we'll see. As you said, Tukai not feeling all that comfortable. Maybe now it's a golden turn on Buff Duck's end. Yeah, Golder would definitely be perfectly fine coming back in. I'm, I'm also kind of looking at Mastio and thinking maybe this is his time to shine, get at least one hold off, working his way towards Flaming Meteorite. Because I don't imagine... Yowler's going to be targeting Tukai. I think that he really wants to kill this Skunch or, I mean, maybe like the Volaren Goulder that swaps in, but no, Skunch stays. Wait Ninja Jutsu, despite his overexertion, goes into the Cerny for some pretty big damage. Plus one defense. I mean, Skunch doesn't kill himself with the overexertion, so that's nice if, if Yowler decides to go in. Oh no, Cerny goes in first with the Water Cutting Lily. Tukai surviving for now tornado onto the cerny 38.2 down to 6.8 oh. and oshitashi oh no 100 down to 52. that was big i think buff duck was banking on the kill on the cerny there tornado ninja jutsu he was praying was enough uh, but funny enough, uh, Cerny actually outsped the Tukai. Usually we see Tukai very, very speedy. They're usually played in freeze comps where you need things like max speed. Uh, but yeah, Tukai going second. So even if uh, even if the Tornado killed there, if it was able to go first, Cerny still surviving, gets the Water Can Lily off. And that's big. Water Can Lily should be enough to kill Tukai from this position. And we saw it. Cerny is faster than the Tukai and is definitely faster than the Golder. So Tsubaki feeling comfortable, even though Cerny would go down with the Golder. But he does get the kill on the Tukai. Of course, of course, Buff Duck could swap into Mastion, mitigate all that big damage. But we'll see. Maybe Subaki makes the makes a read there too. Swaps out the Cerny for maybe something like uh, Grumper. Grumper doesn't seem that bad. If you anticipate a Masion, Grumper has those heavy, uh, heavy, heavy mud showers going into Masion's way. 
if that's the play as well, Yowler could use show off again. It's a little bit greedy, but it's definitely open and a possibility that would just make this Yowler unstoppable. Yeah, you're right. We're seeing it here. He forewent. He forewent the Nagas for this Yowler, but we're seeing it pay dividends, especially if he gets another show off. It was already kicking butt. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, two guy feelings too endangered. Volrin comes out potentially trying to eat that water cutting kind of Lily. Oh, and it's a bush. Interesting. So trying to live an extra turn. I mean, that's not very surprising necessarily. Oh my gosh, that Savage Suplex did <laughs> so much. <laughs> wow. Uh, so Cerny survives thanks to his bush. And Volarend almost doesn't thanks to no fault of his own. Yeah, you're right. The bush uh, was it was obviously a good play, but yeah, Vol Yaller not going with the, a show off, just going with big damage, and Yaller doing so much. Pretty much did the majority of work against Skunch, doing huge 80% damage on the Volarin. You know what is looking like not picking up, uh, not picking up Knock Eyes is already playing paying off because maybe Buff Duck's team is really good at playing under deceit aura aka playing against not guys and subaki caught wind of that and trying to change up the strategy forgetting about the sea aura just trying to go aggressive pressure with the yaller and it's looking good so hyper kinetic strike trying to go into if a grumper eats those for days yeah toxic ink on the fluffy not gonna do anything and now we have this vola versus vola which used to be so popular but has kind of fallen out as of recent buff ducks vola plus one speed we have to imagine is going to go before subaki's mm -hmm. minus one special defense means that an hks from subaki potentially kills vola right here and now and that was really good obviously hyperkinetic strike intended for the cerny if it would have easily brought it down but beautiful double swap beautiful double swap but yaller takes no damage save it for later he doesn't have the most buff so doesn't really care about losing that you lose your show off though you lose that 50 percent but wolfy or floofy then it takes some big damage but it's not doppelganger or it is doppelganger forgive me it is doppelganger he had doppelganger onto a double screen, so it negated a little bit there. Fluffy decides to target Goulder as it is more effective damage. He knew he was going to go slower. So just let Grumper take care of Volaren as he does so well. Followed up finally by Goulder's Toxic Gang. Once again, not going to do very much at all to this Grumper. Yeah, and it looks like a big difference is Subaki making really good reads. For example, eating that Toxic Ink with the Toxic Volarin, eating that HKS with the Electric Grumper, just getting a bit of the better exchanges in these uh in these interactions. And it looks like Buff Duck already seeing the bigger picture. Subaki Chan bringing to the one a piece, one game away separates these tamers from that finals position. And we'll see. I mean, they they have a lot of information to work with. They pretty much know all the items on the Thames. They pretty much know all the techniques on the Thames. It comes down to who makes those sharper reads. Who wants to make? Who wants to play a bit more risky? Uh, and yeah, may the best tamer win today. And you know, I was just thinking, it's funny that we could see uh, the PC players. It would be amazing if we ever see a PlayStation 5. Who's going to be the first ever PlayStation 5 player A to ever compete and then B to take home a tournament? That would be a big feat to see, especially if it's a new player. Like if it's someone's alternate, you know, like Subaki's all on PS5 or something. <laughs> but I want to see a brand new spanking player on PS5 take it home. That would be interesting. That would be really, really interesting. Yeah, I think we're only a couple of weeks away from PlayStation players joining the competitive community, starting to build their first teams, learning the game that we've all fallen in love with over the past year. And and I think it's going to be very, very cool bringing new blood and new talent into the scene that has almost been the same for quite a while. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they, they're they coming at a good time. If you if you start learning the meta before Saipan Koo, then you have a good a good time. You know, you don't have to learn all the Thames. And Saipan Koo, of course, the new players have to learn those Thames too. But it's easier to deal with the Thames now in the pool 
then you know adding another 25 temps to take into consideration so yeah these ps5 players are getting a good head start compared to you know the next wave of players that join maybe on siphon coup maybe on full release so hey might as well start getting a good head start which some of the playstation 5 players are seeming to do so so yeah little by little we might be seeing some of those guys enter the tournament scene and i wish them the best but hey, Buff Duck saying Yowler did too much work that game too. Let's go ahead and ban that one. So no banning the Kinu this game. What does Subaki want to answer back? This is definitely different. This is so different for sure. Every single game, game one had different bands, game two had different bands, and that's what makes the best Tencent players. They recognize the problems uh, with game to game situations. And yeah, we're seeing that there. Buff Duck bopping the Yowler. Does Subaki want to lean on the mix? And yes, he does. Okay, confirming the mix ban. So let's see how it plays out. This is going to be a heck of a finals or a heck of a semi finals. I think that the sweat band on mix was really what tipped the tables. To, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go with it mm -hmm. uh, in, in favor of banning mix over Mastion. Because I almost think Subaki wants to try and do some of those stall shenanigans this game with Saku, Kinu, Cernif, now that they're all available for him. Yeah, you th you're saying uh, Subaki is going to pick up Kinu and do some Kinu Saku stuff? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, we, you know, we've been seeing a lot of the first game was naga second game was yowler now i think it's time for subaki to bring back his tried and true <laughs> method of, of yeah. just revitalizing and pushing mm -hmm. and, and winning the game on turn 30. exactly now maybe not maybe take a step <laughs> back maybe not all the way to turn 30 but you know a little bit stallier i'm okay with that uh but all right so buff Dog does pick up the wolfie and that was the number one uh, number one band for turn or for game one and hey subaki has yet to play with the kinu so here the kinu goes can it make a big impact in the final game of this match we're gonna find out and hey i think rarzi subaki is listening uh, listening in the game plan if he goes kinu surnev that is 100% some uh, some nature salad shenanigans going on in this game number three. How can Buff Duck, maybe Mastion is okay into that? And there it is, Kinu, Cerny. Uh, let's see how it fares against Buff Duck squad. Yeah, I mean, this lead, absolutely. Buff Duck is kind of pressured here. If he doesn't bring Mastion, that is being banned. He, he will not get to bring it if it's not his second pick right now. But that doesn't mean that he should pick it. As he does decide to go with Volar and it, it gives him just a little bit more coverage. He still has Noxious Bombs for Kinu mm -hmm. and for Naga, as well as, uh, you know, work up his speed, get some high power HKSs onto Cerny, mm -hmm. even do some damage towards Volar and as we know, Buff Ducks is holding onto that Doppel. Exactly, and as you said, you don't pick up the Mastion, it will be catching the ban, and that's exactly what Tsubaki does, so fair play to him. Buff Duck, what are you thinking? Are we going Nagas? Are you fearing the Nagas? I don't know, the Saku with this with this Kinu here always feels like a problem to me, uh, but we'll see. I mean, Buff Duck a better tamer than I'll ever be, so does ban the Nagas. So, it leaves it open for the Yowler Scout uh, Skunch pickup. And those are some heavy, heavy hitters. No more mental pressure on Subaki's side. So we'll see. I don't think Buff Duck was able to really play or really showcase his Yowler. So maybe it's game three where he displays it. Yeah, we've seen everybody else use their Yowler very, very well between Ricky and Subaki. Now, Buff Duck, is it your turn? Will Yowler <laughs> be the winner? Exactly, and this is looking like the tried and true Subaki comp. Kinu, Cerny, Luma, Go or Golder, and Saku. Uh, those are probably the, the, the top 10 Subaki has played in the past couple weeks slash months. So let's see. So Buff Duck does pick up those two neutral temps, which is exactly why he banned the Nagas. Last temp temp, you got Tukai, you got Golder. Hmm... Golds are okay against Kinu Cernif, decent against Saku, but Saku just hits so hard. But hey, this is it. We're so close, yet a little far <laughs> to the finals, but here is so close to ending the semifinals. Tsubaki-chan, Buff Duck, 
one tamer i keep saying it because it's only true one tamer heading into our final so let's get into the action volar and volfi kinu sarnif salad on one side uh just good good temps on the other side and not too much pressure all around i'm seeing i guess a noxious bomb but those physical attacks on a certain if already at plus one defense, it kind of feels bad, right? Because uh, Kinu's here now, so Cernif is really going to start getting carried away. And if Cernif gets all the way buffed up, we're talking about plus five defense, Yaller and Skunch are going to have a very, very hard time taking that Cernif down, especially with Bush, especially with Violines. So that could be the game plan here. Usually it's like buff up the Saku. It might be buff up the Cernif game plan. Yeah, I think for Buff Duck right now, Volarand is absolutely instrumental. Because this Yowler Skunch combo can probably kill everybody except for Cernif and Kinu. Mm -hmm. And and Volarand is absolutely needed for the other two there. And and you know, especially so it it probably needs to see plus four, plus five speed, and it doesn't have any turbo choreography using friends, so it has to do all of that on its own with Feather Gatling and HKS. That is a lot to ask for, for this Volar end to try and take down Cerny for this game. So, I mean, right out of the gates, Buff Duck has a really great counter team. You know, you'd mentioned the Skunch and Yowler, the perfect jab and Savage Suplex duo that is just unstoppable in some cases. But but I think Cerny is the wall that stops it. All right, so just about 23% onto the Volfi, and man, that certainly didn't really chunk, especially for Volfi not having any buffs on it. But hey, good read, so Feather Gatling thinking it was going to be a noxious bomb onto Kinu, but makes a beautiful read. Golder eating a Feather Gatling on the entry, and he's trapped, so he had a Plague and an FG. Uh, but doesn't take all that damage. These are some tankier attempts for sure. I guess the coat keeping them uh, keeping them higher than I'm used to. And 69.9, nice. Uh, but that will be get going down. Two turns cage. Volan is going to have a good time. Especially because Cerny doesn't do all that much damage onto the Volan. So good stuff. Good stuff from Buff Duck starting out strong. And same for Subaki. Just little damage all around. But more so the effective damage what's on Buff Duck's side. So we'll see how uh, how Subaki tries to get around this. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised to see Golder, I think, for turn one. I, I would have expected something more along the lines of that Saku. Yeah, the only thing I could say, because uh, Buff Duck probably was saying, I'm not going to Noxious Bomb a Cerny. That's going to increase his defense. Let's Noxious Bomb the Kinu. But maybe that's what he was swapping in the Golder for to try to eat a Nox Bomb. But he just read it and, and got a Feather Gatling there. But you're right. Obviously, with the Saku to eat that Feather Gatling would have been awesome. And then you have that second turn for a Tornado on the Volfi, perhaps. But yeah, Saku is coming through just a little bit later than I'd initially expected. Feather Gatling again onto Golder from 69 noise down to 47 a little less noise and a plague <laughs> onto the saku to trap him in too just saying you guys you're my friends we're gonna play some games do you wanna, <laughs> do you wanna play some games yeah and that's exactly what buff duck has in mind no swapping not for subaki which is dangerous part of the game of temp tem is anticipating the swap so when you have Thames trapped on the board it makes it very easy to read you can't swap so i know what i what i want to attack into and it looks like he buff duck is saying we're trying to take big boy golder down and another fg plus maybe a dv I don't even know if that's enough, but actually, wait, plus two speed. I think a hyperkinetic strike is coming out onto the Golder spot, and I do think that should be enough. Even though as thick as Golder is, maybe it's more in the defense department rather than special defense because it's eating those FGs quite well. So maybe more defense invested. So hyperkinetic being a special attack technique should be enough. 47% at plus two speed. I think Golder's going to go down. I mean, the coat is there, though. So it might be kind of close. The, the the lucky thing for Buff Dog is I believe Coat still doesn't do anything for HKS. Oh, I think that it, right. it'll take it'll take away the special attack damage, which is rather low, but it doesn't impact the speed damage. 
And and even beyond that, I think that this Volarand on Buff Duck side, it's currently minus two special defense. If it uses HKS, it's minus three. And then Saku's got Tornado. Oh, you're so and, right. And that's a pretty risky play for Volarand as well. So Buff Duck starts off the turn, swapping in Skunch for Volfi. And now is his best friend Yowler coming through? No, Noxious Bomb onto this Saku. Does a lot of damage, but nowhere near enough to stop this tornado that is about to savagely destroy <laughs> Volaren from 100 down to 16, just like Huge. that. The hopes of a Volaren to stop Cerny are just gone. Huge, huge, huge. And now I guess you have no other option because, I mean, you probably die on the entry. I think you have to HKS. However, maybe the window of opportunity has passed here. Golder no longer trapped. Could be looking at swapping into something like a Kinu. Mitigate all that damage. And then Kinu, pretty good against the Skunch the following turn. Doesn't seem like all that bad of a play. But that was also maybe maybe not trying to kill Golder. Maybe focusing on Saku here. Since it is trapped for this turn. Actually, wait, that was a really good play. Making sure Saku is in Savage Suplex range. Because now Skunch is on the board. Tornado is offline. And you are trapped. Saku is 100% trapped. So uh, Skunch is 100% going to be connecting with that Savage Suplex. And it will be bringing it down. So not a bad play. I think Saku is more dangerous than a Golder in this situation. So fine play. Fine play for Buff Duck. I, I agree that uh, definitely Saku is more of a threat. I just kind of wish that Volaren didn't have to take that huge hit. Very I mean, true. Even, even Golder with its weakness wouldn't have taken that much damage. Yeah, I can see that. And yeah, I mean, Volaren maybe did his job here. If he definitely gets the kill on Golder, it, it for sure did his job. But, you know, getting that good Noxious Bomb onto Saku... Uh, maybe it was worth it just for the for the scunch here and nice buff duck wants to save the heavy it's just a huge cannonball of an attack waiting to be triggered so we gotta keep a lookout hks is a hundred percent online so whenever it comes down to it buff duck is ready to pull the trigger but yowler comes out instead and there it is exactly what buff duck had and uh, had in store savage suplex brings out the saku so well done you didn't get the kill on golder but as we said, you do guarantee the kill on Saku. So that's big. First Temtem down, and it happens to be on Tsubaki's side. Yeah, but now Kinu finds his way back to the field to stare down two neutral types, one of which also a melee type. Skunch is not very happy to be here, despite his, uh, his best friend Yowler standing next to him. It's just not going to happen, buddy. Skunch has got to leave. And really, only Golder is available to swap in here. Yeah, either or. Can you do some good damage? As we saw, it was three beta bursts did enough for the Yowler. But you know, Cerny little by little is getting out of hand. A couple more hits onto Cerny. Uh, definitely is going to be increasing. I mean, both of these temps are physical hitters. Golder's a physical hitter. Uh, so is Volarin, besides that HKS, of course. So yeah, maybe Cernif, you know, Tsubaki's down a 10, but the real issue in this game is that Cernif. And you know, if it does get, as we said before, some water can lilies onto each of these neutral temps, it'll just be about two to three, and that should be enough. So let's see if Buff Duck chose the right one for the beta burst. Wow, Tsubaki not falling bait to the Golder, instead goes to the Yowler there. Yeah, I mean, that was that was a good read from Tsubaki. It was, Buff Duck had to swap it out, but there's always the chance. There's always that little inkling that maybe they don't. Maybe he stays in and he perfect jabs me, and then I take more damage, and then it spirals. But Tsubaki successfully reading, hitting this Yowler down below 50% already, thanks to a little bit of help from Cerniv. And despite losing Saku early on, Tsubaki is still in a very good position. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Maybe Saku was just a noble cause. I uh, needed to pull out his other other Thames ahead. Because, yeah, despite, as you said, being down, Buff took essentially down on that Volarin, but not so much. That's still a big, big attack left on that Volarin. 
So we'll see, he's probably just gonna bring it in after a attempt of his dying just to be really safe. But there we go, Salad stuff going off and a stone wall on the Kinu. That is big. Kinu is staying around for a very long time. And yeah, it always I mean, impresses me uh, when a one prior move like Stonewall goes before a Golder. <laughs> it just goes to prove how freaking slow a Golder really is. Especially with that one SV most people are running in speed. Yeah, that's actually crazy to think he's Buff Doc is running potentially the slowest Tem possible and one of the fastest Tems possible in this Volar end. Yeah, very true. Both sides of the, of the pole. But looking good, I mean, he did a revitalize on the Kinu, so Kinu has a revitalize of his own to go here. And we saw how much damage Wolfie took from a WCL, so that's not going to be enough. I was thinking maybe uh, uh, Kinu could do the remainder, but I guess once to save the Kinu from taking more damage, the Plague doesn't do all that much onto Golder. But better yet, you don't trap the Kinu, so that was a really good play for Subaki. Yeah, keeping Kinu alive just a little bit longer and wasting some more of Buff Duck's uh, Goulder's stamina as he just shoots into that strong liver once more. Goulder still at 45.7, the same as he was before. Yeah, really good stuff. So that was a wonderful read. Maybe Buff Duck thought uh, Kinu was trying to get the little edge, beta burst on the Volfi for the kill. But Subaki playing it really safe, bringing out the Golter, and it has to, it happens to be strong liver, so actually heals up thanks to that toxic ink from Buff Duck. So yeah, just making, uh, having the good, having some good reads here in the middle of the game. And Cerniv, I mean, no one ever wants to attack into Cerniv because everyone knows how out of hand it gets. You do some damage, but then they just heal that damage up. So it's almost like you did virtually nothing, and it just stings. It stings to see it go down. So we're seeing everyone ignoring the Cerny for Buff Doug rather, ignoring the Cerny in this game. And out comes a Skunch. That makes it just as hard though when you ignore Cerny if you let it build itself up. Now, I mean, you have to choose between letting it heal and, and just really targeting that spot and trying to kill it early or struggling a little bit later on as, as Colossity Cerny just eats all of your physical hits that now pretty much all that's remaining and and just a really tough spot here i think if volarin had just a bit more hp buff Doc would still be feeling pretty comfy cozy but this is this is a pretty tough situation the revitalize under gulder means that now it, it's going to take that hks to try and kill it and even then it may not be able to yeah, I mean, one of the saving graces for Buff Duck, he still has that scunch with the war drum, so very, very heavy hitter. Maybe that could do enough. We'll see in the next couple of turns. But here, speaking of the Volarin, heavy hitting HKS is online. That technique has not been used. It might very well be his very last technique, most likely, of course, as Subaki could be targeting. The question is, do you go for Cernif or do you go for Golder? Because they're both trapped. I'm, I'm wondering, it's, you know, he ha Buff Duck hasn't been attacking Cerniv so that it hasn't started stacking up in the defense department. So maybe Hyperkinetic Strike, Savage Suplex, is that enough for a tanky Cerniv? I feel like Cerniv is just too bulky though. Hmm. Yeah, the Cerniv is already plus two on special defense and plus two on physical mm -hmm. defense. It, it's in such a good place. With 94% HP, it did just use its Revitalize, so there's a little bit going for you there, but I, I don't think that this will do enough damage. The HKS does go through into Goulder instead, doesn't quite kill, so it does force Skunch's hand targeting Goulder with the Oshidashi. That was quite a lot of damage, <laughs> potentially, uh, potentially thinking that maybe HKS wouldn't have done that much. Yeah, better safe than sorry, I guess. Uh, of course, the PJ maybe got the same result, but hey, you still got Savage Suplex online and the, the Cerniv overexert. That's kind of big. You know, nothing's coming out from the Cerniv side. So let's see. Last three Temtems apiece. Volarin on Subaki's side has yet to hit the board. And if we do remember, that is indeed an anaerobic Volarin. 
I'm not going to be big here as there is a lot of physical attackers on buff deck side so not as impactful as it would be against more special attackers. But this is close, this is close, it might come down to Cerny being the last Tem. Golder is okay, those toxic ticks on Kinu will add up but man I think Cerny is just a bit too too much of a problem for buff duck. As well as the, as the, as the Volerant too for the Golder. Yeah, I think if Subaki is able to position himself so that Kinu and Volorant are together, fighting down Yaller and Skunch, th that would probably be the win right then and there for Subaki. Uh, definitely, Fluffy coming out now is good. Now Kinu can swap into this Cerneep spot. It gives a buff onto Fluffy. I mean, Goulder's going to be pressured out. Skunch is really going to have to target it down with some perfect jabs early on. Because, I don't mean, Kinu is just going to wreak havoc on Skunch and Yowler. Yeah, and all the pressure, it's an easier, easier read for this very turn. You know Cerneef doesn't is not outputting anything thanks to the overexertion. You know Kinu is not swapping in thanks to the cage. So you're only really worried about the Volarin here. Savage Suplex is online. We saw how much damage it did before. The Yowler did almost like 80%, so I'm, I'm anticipating something like 60, 60, 70% from this Skunch. Uh, especially with the War Drum involved. And I don't know, maybe it's time to try to tick down the Cerneef 2, or you could try to just go half damage into the Volarin 2 just for the little ticks, or the little, the little, um, just a little damage, period. Oh, okay, setting up for the one shot. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's, it starts us off with that minus one. That's good for when Kinu definitely does come in and bring it back to normal. Toxic Ink will do a little bit more, but still not too, too much. Goulder did survive Feather Gatling pretty nicely uh, compared to how it could have. We've definitely seen some Feather Gatling Volas when their max attack even hand fan just do so much damage yeah let's see i mean if key if even if kinu comes in here it still might be a tough time for this volarin we'll keep an eye though so feather gatling did obviously over 33 so yeah three feather gatlings will close out the golder but yeah if he, if buff took is able to kill the volarin I think Buff Duck is looking pretty good. A physical dam I mean, certainly is still an issue, but definitely looking better than he was in the past. Yeah, I mean, killing Volarin is definitely the best start because then there's no more swaps for Kinu. He's got to stay in and take some of these Goulder uh, Toxic Inks, which will pretty quickly bring Kinu down. I think maybe just oh, one in. Toxic Ink over two this turns. Wow. wow wait that is big Volderin does indeed go down i thought it was easier said than done but buff that made it look like taking candy <laughs> from a baby but certainly okay okay so maybe saving the last kinu buff of the game for the cerny which is gonna be the win condition for subaki so this is it final two temptems of the semi-finals it happens to be the same exact temp sims he started with. So again, you know, it's, it's kind of poetic in these semifinals, right? <laughs> the beginning of the end, the end of the beginning is what Subaki finds himself in. But that certainly in a different situation as it was in the opening. It is at plus four defense. And all these are physical damage dealers. There is two revitalized with the nature synergy apiece. So yeah, I mean, it looks close, so we'll see. Ooh, the Savage Suplex onto Kinu. Looks like he wants to try and kill it this turn, but I mean, definitely Beta Burst is... Oh, Revitalize first from Cerneef, so now Kinu is not even going to die. The Toxic Ink won't be able to do it. Beta Burst brings down Skunch. Another Beta Burst next turn will do so much damage to Yowler. Potentially even killing if it's doubled in by Cerneef. Yeah, I think that that should solidify it. Kinu not taking so much damage. Kinu having another revival or having a revitalize online. But if you revitalize here, Yaller doesn't go down. But I don't think you need to wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's try to think this out. 
Inu, if you beta burst and certainly water current lilies, I think Yowler dies, but so does Kinu, right? Because the toxic ink kills Kinu. And then it's Cerny versus Golder. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, what is another line of play that can go down? Let me know if you see one, Merzi. Um, personally, <laughs> I think... I think best way forward for Subaki would just be to gun down Yowler very quickly. Okay. You know, let the let the Kinu go because even though Gulder has type advantage over Cerneef, Cerneef wins that fight. You yeah, know, thanks to Bush game. knocking off the ticks, thanks to Revitalize keeping it healthy and Gulder mm -hmm. not being able to heal itself, uh, other than metabolizing so right. off of Cerneef, which it doesn't want to do. Uh, so I, I think that that would be the best play if you can kill Yowler before it's able to do damage to Cerneef. That mm -hmm. would be that would be ideal. Yeah, and Yowler the second slowest Tem on the board, second to Golder. So I think Subaki is going with that Beta Burst. Oh wait, wait a minute, wait Cerneef. Oh Cerneef did a front whip. Oh that almost cost him there. Actually no, it's still the same result. Kinu still goes down, uh, but Cerniv over exerted, so maybe there's a chance. Yeah, I mean, there'll be a nice little bit of damage from the Toxic Ink, Toxic Tick, but then, I, I mean, Cerniv does have Sweatband on, nothing ever snared that away from him, so he can just revitalize Bush, revitalize himself back up. And I think that this is uh, pretty much written and done at this point. I, I think Subaki's our winner. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I think, I mean, plus five defense is no joke. As you said, Bush is online. Hmm. All right, so yeah, Revitalize brings it all the way up to what, 55, I believe. Yeah, 55, to Toxic Ink back down to uh, to 30 with the with the extra tick. Uh, this might be a stamina game, so the Sweatband user has that advantage, so there goes the Bush. Golder most likely resting, maybe that was a bit preemptive, maybe a Bush the next turn, because you know Golder's resting this turn. Yeah, I wouldn't have even minded if Subaki clicked rest and then revitalized this turn and Bush the following turn. I, I think he still would have been okay there. Mm -hmm. It could have been risky if uh, Golder just wanted to overexert, but... Let's see, I can't really tell. I just know in the stamina war, the sweatband user always tends to win. But Golder, even with that plus five defense, it seems like Subaki is just gonna have to be hitting revitalized bush, revive revitalized bush. And then when it does want to go on the offense, it's not gonna be doing all that much to Golder. So look at that. 26% Cerneef. 63.3% Golder. This is kind of close. I don't believe Bush is online for this turn. Or did two turns pass that fast? They might have passed real fast. Maybe it is back online. Either way, he goes for the Revitalize now. Gets back up to 50. Toxic Ink gets Coulter so close again, so he's got to rest. I mean, maybe Buff Duck can actually do this. Maybe he has enough attack on this Coulter to, to make it happen. The Bush for Cerneef evades nothing as Goulder takes a nap. Yeah, I think I think it comes down to that. Like you have to get Goulder to use stamina without uh without the bush you know right into the bush. But no he keeps reading it perfectly and yeah forcing Zubaki to just have to revitalize. So if this keeps going turn 30 it looks like Buff Doug might have done it. It's so so close though yeah, it's actually very surprising how much damage this Goulder is doing to a plus five defense Cerniv. Yeah, is there little attack TVs? There's some stamina TVs because he's not going down. He's playing it so well. But yeah, you know what? Cerniv's health is not decreasing, but it's also not increasing. And Goulder's health is staying exactly the same. So, I mean, if the turns keep playing out the exact same way they've been playing out for the past couple turns, Buff Duck is looking like he's going straight to the finals. Ooh, Buff Duck reads the bush, goes for the rest, gets himself so much stamina, he can go the rest of the game now. Revitalize on Cerneef. I mean, it, it's a little bit higher. It's got into the green, but it's right back down to 41%. 
Yeah, you know what? For Golder not having a sweat ban, it seems like he, he's getting the perfect rest. Like, if you, if you exert some stamina for the bush, but he keeps getting the beautiful rest during the bush turn, so he's not wasting any stamina. Every single tick of stamina is going into decreasing Tsubaki's surname HP, so there is no wasted uh, resources per se coming out of Buff Duck. So really, really impressive stuff. It looks like the 1v1 favoring Big Boy Golter. I'm impressed. That Frond Whip was potentially the difference maker, though even though it lowered Cerny's health back down to 14% with only a couple turns left. I mean, if he's able, now he's got to bush this turn. He really can't, so Gulder wins just based on timing of stamina usage. Yeah, I wonder if Kini would have survived one more and then you could have maybe Hypno or Beta Burst or something of the like to try to do more damage. Hmm. Yeah, because now Revitalize brings him up to 50, but Toxic Ink brings him far too low to match Goulder. It's turn 30, Revitalize is not available. Bush is not available. Oh, did Goulder just finally overexert? Yeah, he did overexert a little bit, and Cerny does drop. <laughs> wow, I actually thought we were going oh, to turn Cerny 30. Cerny actually dies. Yeah, I think Subaki was saying, I have to do something different.